Hi, this is Wiley Sharpway with Catamaran Central, and today I want to take you for a quick video walkthrough on board Indigo, a Lagoon 67S, and without a doubt, the fastest Lagoon catamaran ever built. Now, they only built four Lagoon 67s during the entire production run, and this was haul number three and the only S model built. The big differentiator between the other three boats and Indigo and the S designation was the use of carbon fiber in places like the bulkheads as well as cross beams. And this created a lighter boat and a very stiff boat. Now Indigo completed a circumnavigation within the last few years and prior to that went through a major refit which included new engines, generator, rigging, sails, etc, etc. And she's been really well maintained since then. Uh, for this price point, and I'll have the full spec sheet and pricing in the description down below, but for this price, I think she represents the best value for dollar in a performance blue water cruising boat anywhere in the world, bar none. Um, now, there are some projects that I would personally do if I were to buy the boat before taking her on another circumnavigation, but all the heavy lifting has been done. You know, it's got a carbon fiber hardtop that was built by Just Catamarans with integrated solar. Uh, you know, generators, engines, electronics, sails are in great shape. I mean, everything about her is really, really nice, and she's ready to go for another trip around the world. So if you'd like to hear more about her, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email, and as always, if you like what I have to say, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks, and have a good day. We're going to start here looking at the bow. Uh, Indigo, like I mentioned in the intro, is haul number three of four Lagoon 67s. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, they stopped building these because it was just simply too expensive of a boat. And in the early 2000s, there, there just wasn't that much demand for a catamaran in the size range. Now a boat in this size range really is not something uncommon to see. Uh, but this is the fastest lagoon ever built. So first thing I want to point out is the large bow sprit. This boat's equipped with a Code Zero a um, spinnaker for off-wind sails, a Genoa, as well as an inner force stay for a self-tacking jib or storm sail. It's a triple spreader aluminum rig that was repainted within the last few years. Looks quite nice with this kind of teal col hull color. Um, really nice boat. I mean, the owner or the, the seller of this boat, or the previous owner of this boat, I should say, built this boat to do a circumnavigation, which he did, and uh, maintained it with a complete open checkbook. So we're gonna come back to the helms in the cockpit, but we'll make our way around to the uh, foredeck first, take a look through there. So one of the things you'll see is the, the head sail lines all run back to the cockpit. You'll also notice a lot of uh, large opening hatches, giving uh, plenty of ventilation throughout the boat. And this is really the first place you start seeing the scale of the Lagoon 67 here. Is up here on the foredeck. So I'll give you guys a quick pano through. So it's a two-piece split uh, trampoline with a large lingeron uh, attached to a very long bow sprit. So when they brought this boat up from the Dominican Republic, they didn't see anything under 10 knots the entire way up. Uh, you know, they were comfortably cruising at 10, 12, 13 knots without any effort. Autopilot on, just simply sitting back. So through here, we've got plenty of deck storage as well as anchor lockers. This boat, as already mentioned, was set up for blue water cruising. And um, you'll see, oh, let me just open this hatch. You'll see that it's got an oversized Maxwell windlass with just a ton of really large anchor chain. I mean, the anchor chain on this boat is, uh, you know, something you'd see on a Lagoon 77, although this boat is significantly lighter than, you know, the larger, more modern cruising catamarans. I mean, this boat was built when, uh, you know, Benito, Group Benito, CNB Shipyard was building performance-oriented cats. So we've got a uh, really... Um, sturdy mass base here all the bulkheads in this boat as well as all the main structures carbon fiber which is not only incredibly strong but incredibly light we've got a number of electric winches here to help manage the halyards reefing lines etc etc i'm going to take a few steps up here to the hard top or the coach roof to show you the hard top now this hard top was built in 2016 by uh, just catamarans in fort lauderdale uh, out of carbon fiber with the integrated solar I'll show you the sunlight when we get down inside. 
Uh, but but this hardtop costs something like 250, 220, something in that range to build. And they did a really nice job keeping the aesthetics of the boat, as well as integrating something like 1500 uh, watts of solar. So we're gonna make our way around to the starboard weather deck. Oh, through there, we've got a brand new uh, dive compressor. A lot of ventilation you can see moving forward as well as a nice wide weather deck. We've got boarding ladders, both to starboard as well as port. That's how I got on the boat. And all of the sail control lines leading back here to both helms. So you've got great visibility from the starboard helm where you can see both bows. A little tricky to get it through the camera angle as well as both sterns and engine controls all the way outboard both the starboard as well as over there at the port helm like i mentioned all the sail control lines come back to the helm and they're all oversized harken winches i mean basically everything on this boat was oversized and uh, set up for blue water cruising so for an electronics package we have a combination of bng electronics which were done in the uh, last few years as well as some ray marine components too and then down below, we've got the Yanmar control panels for uh, starboard engine here, port engine over on the port helm. And uh, these engines were repowered in 2016 and uh, reportedly ran really good on the delivery up. I mean, look at these transoms. I mean, this boat just exudes sexiness, sailing performance, and um, it's just a good looking boat. I mean, I've been on a lot of boats and it's really, really rare to get on something so unique and special. Uh, we've got a really large aluminum tender with uh, custom made chaps, two stroke outboard, just to give you guys a sense of how much attention to detail they, they put into the boat during the refit. They even painted, painted the um, life rafts to match the whole color. So we've got the cockpit here. Give you guys a quick pan through the cockpit. Tons of seating, nice uh, L-shaped settee to starboard. Bench seat with articulating backrest to port, as you can see, and a oversized teak uh, or an oversized wood table that you could easily accommodate eight people at for dinner with day beds over to starboard, as well as day beds over to port behind this L-shaped settee. And we've got a second set of controls over here on the port side with the uh, same electronics package, B&G combined with uh, Ray Marine. And um, you know, throttles here on the outboard side too. And then more uh, winches for sail handling back here in the cockpit. Everything's powered, everything's oversized. Um, you know, boat this large, it's really important to have good sail management. Otherwise you'll, um, you know, you could get yourself into to trouble pretty easily if, if you didn't have such a well thought out sail plan. All of this was done by a company here in Lauderdale called Nansen Underwood, which has been in business for a very long time uh, during the refit in 2016. So we've got a Harkin primary over here, as well as a Harkin uh, primary over there on the starboard side too. And I just love the sunlight that they built into this beautiful carbon fiber hardtop, as well as the grab rails too. Uh, we've got our cockpit refrigerator through that hatch there, cockpit ice maker as well as a small uh, mini bar, I'm sorry, wet bar here. And then plenty of storage underfoot here in the cockpit, as well as you can see some access panels there for smaller storage too. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the boat. So making our way into the salon, the first thing I'm gonna point out is this massive interior table, which you could easily sit 10 people at with storage here, storage there, as well as storage underneath the settees. We've also got more storage there at the base of the mast, a large L-shaped settee starboard forward with a coffee table, and then starboard aft, we've got a uh, nav station with uh, all of your uh, breakers, control panels down low, as well as up top here, and a uh, computer to run some navigation software as well. I'm gonna just look back towards the cockpit and you'll see it's just a huge opening to get between the cockpit and the salon. Uh, for boat, you know, this generation to have this type of um, natural transition between the cockpit and the salon is um, really something ahead of its time. But I think part of the reason they were able to get away with it too is because of the high-tech uh, construction techniques used in the production of this boat. I mean, it's all foam cord, carbon fiber bulkheads. I mean, all in all, really just stoutly built. So we're going to make our way down the starboard companionway. 
and uh, making our way aft. We've got a semi walk around queen size berth uh, with shelving both on the outboard side, inboard side, as well as up top. We've got a large hanging locker. I'm sorry, that's just a closet here first. And then a hanging locker, very large hanging locker, just forward of that. And then we've got the first of uh, the heads on board. So a single basin sink with tons of storage down below. The heads decommissioned while it's at the dock. That's what the tape's for. Uh, sink and vanity, and then a separate shower stall forward. It's amazing, I mean, feeling these doors, I mean, they're so light. And it's not because of inferior uh, materials used, but it's just they're all you know honeycombed uh, foam core foam cord cell. Really nice. Center line four. We've got access to the electrical uh, space here, so really good access for all that. And then making our way to starboard four. Very similar to what we saw in the port aft. Sorry, starboard aft cabin. A lot of storage here on the inboard side. And then a semi walk around queen size berth forward with a little desk and just look how much natural lights coming into this space right now. Um, one thing I will point out is the boat does need some varnish work. This cabin's probably the worst of the cabins, but you can see there, um, it was raining really hard this morning. Everything around the windows is dry. Um, so there's no, no signs of active leaking or anything like that. Uh, but, but the boat does need some varnish work inside. Um, but for the price point for this caliber of boat, that's probably worth taking on. You'll see this head is very comparable to the starboard aft head with a separate shower stall. So we're gonna make our way across the salon, which I mean, <laughs> look at the size of the salon. This is a serious blue water cruising boat. Honestly, like at this price point, the boats you're looking at in this kind of price point and age are something like this, which is a very rare boat, or a, a Privilege 585. And I think I'd rather have this over a Privilege 585. Uh, but hey, what do I know? Semi walk around Queen Berth, couple of opening ports on the outboard side, as well as an overhead deck hatch. Very, very comparable to what we saw in the starboard aft cabin there. And then the head is also identical to what we saw over on the starboard side. Now this galley is absolutely massive. So updated appliance with Miele coffee maker built in, oven, dual basin sink with drying rack, tons of storage above it. And then over on the outboard side, a five burner cooktop, another oven, washing machine, storage down low, storage up top, plenty of cold storage throughout the boat. And uh, probably one of the best things from a blue water cruising standpoint, is they converted this port forward crew cabin into a workshop with plenty of storage for everything you could possibly need. I mean, like I've already said a number of times, this boat was set up for uh, circumnavigation and, uh, and and you can tell walking through it that there's one reason to own this boat. Uh, well, a number of reasons to own this boat, but the main reason is because you could take it anywhere in the world if you wanted to. So there you go. This is Indigo 3, the world's fastest lagoon catamaran ever built. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email, and as always, if you like what I have to say, don't forget to hit the like button, sorry, the subscribe button. Thanks and have a good day.